Hello friends, welcome to the fourth session of chemistry. As you all know, we have started with the seventh lesson of your syllabus, that is elements of group 16, 17 and 18. In the last three sessions, we came to know about the occurrence, electronic configuration of the elements of group 16, 17 and 18. That means we all are introduced with these elements. We also have learned about the periodic trains of some physical properties of these elements. Which are those? Those are atomic and ionic radii, ionization enthalpy, electron gain enthalpy, electronegativity. Now, in this session, we are going to start with physical properties of group 16, 17 and 18. Now, we will start one by one. The first group is oxygen family. We also call them chalcogens. What are physical properties then? Physical property are those such as state, color, odor, nature, their melting and boiling points, etc. We'll see one by one. Now, as we all know, the at room temperature, oxy oxygen is in gaseous state, but the rest of the elements of its family, that is sulfur, selenium, tellurium, polonium, they are in solid state at room temperature. Next property, oxygen and sulfur are non-metals. Selenium and tellurium are metalloids, where polonium, we know it is radioactive, but it is metal. Now melting and boiling point, as we move down, the gaseous state gets converted into solid state. That means naturally melting and boiling point increases down the group as there is increase in atomic number. One more property is shown by these elements and that is called as allotropy. All the elements of group 16, they show allotropy. What is mean by allotropy? Allotropy is the ability of certain elements to exist in more than one physical form. You are well aware of carbon. Last year we have studied carbon and its allotropes. Remember those allotropes? Carbon shows diamond, fullerene, graphite like allotropes. That means it exists in different or more than one form at room temperature. So this is called allotropy. In the same way, all of these elements, they exhibit allotropy. Now, the next group, that is group 17, which is it? It is halogen family. This is your halogen family. Now, their physical properties. In 17th group, first two members, that is fluorine, and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid and iodine is solid at room temperature. Now if we see the color, fluorine is yellowish or pale yellow colored gas. Chlorine is greenish yellow colored gas. Bromine is red colored liquid while iodine is a violet colored crystalline form. All of these members are non-metals. Fluorine and chlorine react with water. That means they are soluble in water. But bromine and iodine are only sparingly soluble in water. That means they are very less soluble in water. Now where they dissolve? They are soluble in various organic solvents such as chloroform, carbon disulfide, carbon tetrachloride, or hydrocarbons and giving colored solution because all of these elements got color. So these are the physical properties of 17th group. Now the last group, noble gases or inert gases, their physical properties. 
Now, noble gases are monoatomic. We have seen oxygen. Oxygen is diatomic. That means in the molecule there are two atoms. But all the noble gases are monoatomic because their last shell is fulfilled. They don't form any bond with any other atom. Hence, they exist in the monoatomic gaseous state in air. Next, they are less soluble in water. They are sparingly, that means less soluble in water. As they are in gaseous state, they have very low melting and boiling point. Do you know helium is the lowest boiling point of any known substance? That is only 4.2 Kelvin. So these are the physical, general physical properties of elements of group 16, 17 and 18. Now, we'll see an important point as far as exam is concerned and that is anomalous behavior because many a times a question has been asked on anomalous behavior of elements. Now, which elements show anomaly? Anomalous behavior means the behavior which is somewhat different than the rest of the family members. As we all know, when we say family, that means they all must resemble. That means they should show similar physical or chemical and chemical properties. Now, when we consider 16 group elements, all of them have outermost electronic configuration same, that is NS2, NP4. That means they should show similar chemical as well as physical property. But still, oxygen shows somewhat different behavior, somewhat different properties, and that is called as anomalous behavior of oxygen. Why it behaves differently? There are some reasons and which are also important. Now, oxygen is located in the 16th group and second period. Uh, if in general, if we observe or we have studied also in last year, the elements in the second period show some anomaly. That we have seen the anomalous behavior of boron in the 13th group, beryllium in the 14th group and carbon in the 15th group. In the same way, oxygen in the 16th group shows anomalous behavior. What are the reasons behind it? The first and most important reason is their smallest atomic size. They are the smallest elements in their family. Second one, they have highest electronegativity values in their family. They have highest ionization enthalpy values in their family. And one more reason which is very important, as they are in the second period, that means their second shell is the last shell. And in the second shell, there are no d orbitals. d orbitals are introduced in the third shell. Hence, all of these elements which are in the second period, they lack d orbitals. That means there is absence of d orbitals. And it has much more effect. It affects the many physical and chemical properties. So these are the reasons why oxygen behaves anomalously. Now we'll see the actual points of difference or the actual anomalous properties of oxygen one by one. The first one is atomicity. Atomicity, that means oxygen is a diatomic molecule. When a molecule of oxygen is formed, two oxygen atoms come together. So we write always its formula as O2. But if we consider other members, they are polyatomic molecules. For example, sulfur, it is S8. That means eight sulfur atoms come together to form a sulfur atom. So oxygen is diatomic, rest of the members are polyatomic. This is first anomalous property. Second is magnetic property. Oxygen is paramagnetic, while others are diamagnetic. What is paramagnetism? Paramagnetic means having unpaired electrons in the last shell. As we all know, NP4, NS2, NP4. That means in the second shell, as there are absence of d orbitals, 
last p orbital has two unpaired electrons and that means they are attracted in magnetic field so oxygen shows paramagnetism while others show diamagnetism third property oxidation state again we consider the electronic configuration in the last shell two electrons are required because its last shell has six electrons and as per octet rule to get stable electronic configuration it requires two more electrons hence the general oxidation state shown by all of these elements is minus 2 but oxygen shows some exception in peroxide it shows a minus 1 oxidation state while in of2 it shows plus 2 oxygen oxidation state but as there are vacant d orbitals in the rest of the elements they can also show positive oxidation state along with minus 2 that means plus 2 plus 4 plus 6 oxidation state but oxygen cannot show higher oxidation state next is nature of hydrides what is hydride hydride is a compound with hydrogen suppose these elements oxygen sulfur selenium they form compound with hydrogen it is called hydride of that element now oxygen with hydrogen forms water that is h2o and as we all know it is liquid at room temperature but all the hydrides of other elements are in gaseous state that means h2s h2se h2t are in gaseous state that is again anomaly hydrogen with oxygen that is water is liquid because of the hydrogen bonding of oxygen we all know very well what is hydrogen bond because of that water is in liquid state okay now one more anomalous property is there that is covalency common covalency of oxygen is 2 what is covalency covalency is capacity of any element to form covalent bonds or to share electrons so oxygen as because of again the same reason absence of d orbitals can show the covalency maximum 2 it can form two bonds but other elements they can exceed the covalency up to 4 so this is again anomaly so these are the anomalous properties of oxygen we have seen the reason as well now the next member which shows anomalous behavior is fluorine it is again in the second period but in the 17th group the reasons again are almost same the reason are almost same the we'll re just revise them first one is small atomic size second one is high electronegative values third is high electronegativity and high ionization potential third one or next one absence of d orbitals and one more property we can see here in fluorine fluorine is extremely anomalous actually because it has very low bond dissociation enthalpy between two fluorine atoms ff bond it is said as the bond dissociation bond dissociation enthalpy means the bond separation enthalpy very less energy is enough to separate fluorine atoms and hence it is very active so it has very less bond dissociation enthalpy these are the four reasons why fluorine behaves anomalously now we will see actual anomalous properties of fluorine Again, the first reason is same ionization enthalpy, electronegativity, etc. are very high for fluorine. Ah, very high means the difference between the electronegativity values of fluorine and chlorine is very much than expected. So, fluorine is extreme, shows extremely high electronegativity, high ionization enthalpy, hence it is anomalous. Next property is ionic and covalent radii melting and boiling point electron gain enthalpy we all have studied the trends they are 
increasing down the group is that means fluorin has lower value but they are lower than expected that means the difference between these properties of fluorine and rest of the members if we consider there is a big gap that means these values are exceptionally low in case of fluorine now the third most of the reactions of fluorine are exothermic so what do you mean by exothermic exothermic that means they release energy when a reaction is formed when suppose of hydrogen and fluorine to form hf the reaction is exothermic uh, quite a big amount of energy is released because it forms short and a strong bond with other elements next property is it forms only one oxoacid oxoacid that means acid which has oxygen atom in it hcl is not oxoacid h2so4 is oxoacid like that if fluorine forms it forms only one oxoacid while other halogen form number of oxides we are going to learn that later now next if we consider the hydrides of these elements hydrides means the compound with hydrogen that means hf hcl hbr like that out of these hydrogen halides hydrogen fluoride is liquid while other hydrogen halides are gaseous gases why because of again the hydrogen bonding shown by fluorine in the same way as that of oxygen oxygen also forms of hydrogen bonding same way and hence h2 is also in liquid state in the same way hydrogen fluoride is also in liquid state because of the hydrogen bonding okay so these are the anomalous properties of hydrogen uh, sorry oxygen and fluorine in exam a question may be asked on what are the anomalous properties or how fluorine and oxygen differ from rest of the family members or what are the reasons why these elements be anomalously like that can be asked so if the question is for three marks you have to explain you have to give six points then only you will get three marks so up to this we will stop here in the next session we will see the chemical properties of elements of 16 17 and 18 thank you